If we want to compare salaries of people with different education, we could create a simple linear model and plot the results. But we cannot trust these results without checking the assumptions of our model. Because if assumptions are violated, the results might be completely wrong. However, the problem with assumptions is that there are too many and most of the time we can't satisfy them all. For instance, our model has not normally distributed residuals, the variances between groups differ, and we have heteroscedasticity. So we can't trust our results without fixing them. But when we start fixing assumptions, we might first either lose data, if, for example, we remove some influential points, or we might reduce interpretability when, for example, we log transform data, or we screw up other assumptions even more because data manipulation constantly changes the parameters of our parametric model. And here is where non-parametric bootstrap progression comes into play. The four reasons a bootstrap model is better than usual linear model is that bootstrapping does not have any distributional assumptions, such as normally distributed residuals or equal variances among groups. Secondly, bootstrap models provide more accurate inferences for example, confidence intervals, which will soon prove on these two examples, one with categorical and one with a numeric predictor. Bootstrap models work better for small samples. And finally, Bootstrap describes variation in the data much better than traditional linear models. Therefore, having Bootstrap models in your toolbox will definitely make you a better data scientist. In order to better understand how bootstrap models work, we need to understand what the bootstrap itself actually is. A bootstrap is a little loop on the back of a boot to help you pull it on. And the phrase pulling oneself up by one's bootstraps means to succeed without any external help. For the data, it simply means resampling. There are only four steps to conduct and visualize bootstrap regression. First, we bootstrap the data, which simply means we take 1,000 samples from our 100 data rows. Every of those 1,000 samples is of the same size as the original data set, namely 100 rows, but is made using replacements, which results into multiple replicates of some of the original rows of the data. Replacements are necessary because we would otherwise simply reproduce the original sample. The assessment set contains the rows of the original data that were not included into bootstrap sample. In order to distinguish bootstrap samples from the original sample, let's call our bootstrap samples splits. Then we fit a linear model to every split using the first map function and tidy up model coefficients with the second map function. Let's use zero plus in the model formula to remove the intercept, because we are interested in estimates of the salary and not the slope of change from that intercept. Now, we not only have 1000 models, which are nested in the column model, but also the results of those models, which are nested in the column coefficients. And if we unnest the coefficients, we'll see five estimates for every of our 1000 models. It's like we have done 1000 experiments, which we can immediately visualize as a distribution. First of all, the distributions seem normal or bell-shaped, which is already amazing because we can use average estimates. But despite normal distribution, I still would prefer median estimate for every group instead of the mean. That makes our non-parametric estimates even more robust, since median is estimated by another wonderful robust technique, quantile regression. I find it really cool, but the coolest thing about this distribution and quantile function is that we can easily get not only classic 95% confidence intervals, but any intervals we want, which is kind of hard to get from our ordinary model. Thus, we actually have more than four advantages of the bootstrap approach. And if we plot our estimates, we can clearly see that 50% of people who did not finish a high school will never reach a salary of 100,000. 
while 95% of folks with higher education will never earn below 100,000 bags. So education matters. But what blew my mind even more the first time I learned to bootstrap progression estimates is that I can even get a distribution of p-values. For that, we just remodeled 1,000. What the hell, let's remodel 10,000 models with the intercept, unnest our coefficients again, and visualize the distribution of our p-values. Now you see why it's always better to take median instead of mean. And if we compare mean and median bootstrap p-values to the p-values from the ordinary models, we'll see that median bootstrap p-values are much closer to the p-values of the ordinary model. And despite the fact that median p-values and ordinary p-values are only slightly different, I would still intuitively trust the bootstrap p-values more because they were produced in a statistically robust fashion where no assumptions were violated. Finally, here is the moment we've been waiting for. Let's use the augment function to produce predictions for every of our 10,000 models. Then calculate a median and 95% confidence intervals from our predictions. Calculate predictions made by the ordinary linear regression. Combine two results into one dataset and compare them visually by first plotting our original 100 observations and then display predictions of both models to see which describes the data best. Interestingly, the bootstrap confidence intervals are slimmer where the variance is low and wider where the variance is high. So, as mentioned in the beginning, bootstrap models describe the variation in the data better and produce, therefore, more accurate and more realistic inferences without violating any assumptions. Bootstrapping with numeric predictors works in the same way. So let's summarize all we have learned so far. Namely, we first create 1,000 samples of our data, then map over it to fit new 1,000 models with a numeric predictor age, we then map over every model and use augment function to extract fitted data for every model in a new nested column with 100 fitted values for every model because every sample in boot data has 100 observations. 1000 models with 100 fitted values result in 100,000 fitted values which we see when we unnest them for plotting and visualize as 1000 lines on the plot. We then create new age data, age from 20 to 75 years old, and call them new in order to evaluate our predictions. Use map function to predict salaries for new age data by every model, then summarize all thousand predictions by the median and calculate 95 and 50% confidence intervals, and finally plot them on top of our thousand fitted models. Then we'll plot the original 100 data points in green and the results of an ordinary linear regression in blue with their 95% confidence intervals in red. And as we can see again, low variance in salaries in the beginning of professional life is described with narrower confidence intervals by the bootstrap predictions as compared to the ordinary linear regression while larger variance in salaries after the age of 45 is described by the bootstrap predictions with wider confidence intervals as compared to the ordinary linear regression. Thus, similarly to the categorical predictor, we see that bootstrap results better describe the variation in the data and produce, therefore, again, more accurate and realistic inferences. So, is bootstrap method perfect? Of course, no. While Bootstrap more accurately describes the variance of a sample, for example, here I really want to include high salaries into my variance to see what is actually possible to earn with this education. If you have real outliers or very influential observations in your data, they will be given more weight than needed. In this case, you would use a robust regression and if you want to become a more complete data scientist in the next 5 minutes, watch this video.